how to pay zero taxes when you sell real estate. Look, if you own real estate, whether it is your personal residence or an investment property, and you want to avoid paying taxes when you sell it, then stick around for this full video because you are in for a special treat. And that treat is saving thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars in taxes, if you can master the concepts that I am about to explain to you. My name is Sherman the CPA and I specialize in tax planning for high income business owners and investors over at mycpacoach.com. Now, a lot of my clients own real estate to offset their income, avoid paying taxes, to preserve their capital, or to just flat out build wealth that passes over to their families. And regardless of the reason, when you own real estate, there typically comes a time where selling makes sense. And even if you are not planning on selling your real estate anytime soon, it is still very important that you understand the tax consequences of selling your property and most importantly, how you can avoid paying tens of thousands of dollars in taxes. And that is going to be the focus of this video. Today, I am going to fully explain how you can avoid paying taxes when you sell your real estate property. If you just stick with me here, you are going to learn both how to avoid taxes when you sell your personal residence and how to avoid taxes when you sell your investment property. And I will also walk you through specific situations in the middle, like what happens if you turn your personal residence into a rental property before selling and how to avoid taxes in that scenario. With that said, let's jump right in. All right, so let's talk about the type of taxes you will typically pay when you sell your property, and then I will show you how to avoid them. So the primary tax you will pay when you sell real estate is capital gains tax. Now, capital gains tax is a tax on the difference between the price you bought the property for and the price you sell the property for. For example, if you bought a $300,000 home, and sold it for $500,000, you would pay capital gains tax on the difference of $200,000. But how much money would you actually have to pay in capital gains tax in that scenario? Well, zero if you use the loopholes that I'm about to show you, but that aside, it depends on how long you held the property. So if you held the property for over 12 months, which is normally the case, then this would be taxed as a long-term capital gain where the tax could be anywhere from zero to 20% based on your income and filing status. But if for some reason you held the property for less than 12 months prior to selling, then it would actually be considered a short-term capital gain, which would be taxed at your individual income tax rate. However, for most high income taxpayers, they will be looking at a 15 or 20% tax on their gain from the sale of that property, which will be equivalent to 30 to $40,000 in additional taxes based on this example. That will be the case until they learn about some of the loopholes in the tax law to get around this tax completely. And the specific loophole you use will depend on if the property is considered your personal residence or a rental or investment property. So let's first talk about how to avoid capital gains tax when you sell your personal residence, and then we'll talk about some more scenarios dealing with rental properties. All right, tax loophole number one, section 121 exclusion. So catch this, the IRS says, that individuals may exclude up to $250,000 of their capital gains or $500,000 if you file jointly with a spouse. And to qualify for this exclusion, all you have to do is satisfy two simple requirements. Requirement number one is that you must own the property. Specifically, you must have owned the home for at least 24 months out of the last five years leading up to the date of sale. And then there's requirement number two which says you must have used the property as your principal residence for, again, 24 months out of the last five years leading up to that sale. The IRS goes on to say that the 24 months of residence can fall anywhere within the five year period and does not have to be a single block of time, which means that even if you lived at the property for one year, rented it for three additional years after that, and then lived in it again for the last year prior to selling it, 
you would still qualify for this exclusion. The IRS just requires that there were at least 24 months where you lived at the property. All right, so let's back up for a second here to make sure that you're following me. In the first example we went over, we established that you would normally pay $30,000 to $40,000 in capital gains tax in the event you sold a property for a gain of $200,000. However, if you meet the requirements of Section 121, you would avoid this tax altogether and put tens of thousands of dollars right back into your pockets. But if the person filing your tax return is not knowledgeable about this rule when you sell your home, then it also means it just costed you an additional 30 to $40,000 in taxes. So it is very important that you do not make that mistake. Now, let me point out something very important here. Section 121 is an exclusion that applies to the sale of your personal residence. But what happens if you sell a property that was originally your personal residence, but was an investment property at the time that you sold it? Well, first of all, if it was your personal residence for at least 24 months of the five year period leading up to the sale, like we discussed, then you have nothing to worry about. But what if it wasn't? In that case, you have a few options. Number one, you can sell the property and not take the exclusion, which means you will pay thousands more in taxes. Or number two, you can move back into the property until you satisfy the 24 month rule and use the exclusion and save tens of thousands of dollars in taxes. Or number three, you can plan in advance and sell your personal residence before renting it out to anyone. Now, as it relates to number three, one creative idea that I've heard is selling your personal residence to an LLC that you own prior to renting it out. That way you can use the exclusion to avoid the capital gains tax, but still own the property through an entity that is controlled by you and can still rent that property out and collect income from the property. Then you can use other tax loopholes specifically for rental properties to avoid even more taxes which we'll talk about in just a second here. But in general, if you are considering creative ways to use the tax law to reduce your taxes, make sure you have a professional in your corner who understands the tax law, which you can find at mycpacoach.com. All right, now let's talk about how to avoid capital gains tax on investment properties that you own. All right, so unfortunately, when your property is solely an investment property, you cannot use the Section 121 exclusion. However, you can take advantage of another loophole in the tax law, which is referred to as a 1031 exchange. Now, a 1031 exchange basically allows you to trade one property for another property. And if done correctly, you would pay no capital gains tax at all. That's right, the IRS says that you are not required to recognize a gain or loss if you make a like kind exchange. So let's use the same example that we used earlier. Let's say you bought a $300,000 property, sold it for $500,000, and that left you with a $200,000 capital gain. Well, if you bought another investment property for $500,000 within 180 days, then you will be able to avoid the capital gains tax under the rules of a 1031 exchange, which means that even as an investment property, you would avoid $40,000 in capital gains taxes on the $200,000 gain if you do the exchange correctly. But how exactly do you do a 1031 exchange correctly? Well, as much as I like to simplify things, the truth is that the rules are a little bit more complex than the section 121 exclusion. So although you may not wanna hear this, it would still probably be worthwhile to get a CPA in your corner to help you do this with precision and save thousands of dollars in taxes. But let me point out a couple of key rules here at a very high level. First of all, when conducting a 1031 exchange, you cannot directly receive cash from the sale of the property. Instead, you basically have to get a middleman involved who receives the funds and acquires the new property that you are exchanging the old one for. This is technically called a qualified intermediary or QI. 
Their job is to facilitate the disposition of your old property and acquire the replacement property on your behalf. So before you sell your property, look into an independent party to act as a QI on your behalf. All right, second big thing here, timelines. You have 45 days from the date you sell your property to identify potential replacement properties, and you have 180 days to acquire the replacement property. Now, if you do not meet these deadlines, then please know that you risk losing the benefits associated with your 1031 exchange. So just be mindful of these things to make sure you are successful in avoiding those nasty capital gains taxes when you sell your property. Oh, and by the way, you can also use your real estate properties to reduce your income taxes as well. If you are interested in learning more about that, then subscribe to our channel and check out my full video walkthrough on that topic. But on the highest level, if you are serious about using these strategies to reduce your taxes, you need to understand the nuances of these rules. There is a lot of red tape that will be impossible to cover in one YouTube video. So if you wanna get off of YouTube and put more money in your pockets, then consider applying to become an exclusive client of mine at mycpacoach.com. As always, thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.